Hello Strength Matters. Welcome to Whiteboard Wednesdays. This is an opportunity for us to offer as much as we can in terms of training principles and concepts to help you become the best version of yourself. Uh, today's concept uh, and component of athleticism is mental toughness. And uh, I'm going to ask Phil straight away uh, with his background in the military and his years of training people, uh, what his thoughts are on this component. Firstly, in all the people I've trained over the years, I've found people who have pretty good levels of all of the other components, but they'll turn up to the session kind of wet behind the ears and as soon as they reach, as soon as they leave their level of comfort, all of a sudden their world changes and they, they, they just won't make any improvement whatsoever. I think in order to make improvement, in order to um, provide enough of a stimulus to your body to initiate an, ad an adaptation, you need to have that mental toughness to be able to push yourself into kind of the zone between easy and safe, we'll come to this in a sec, and pain and trauma, you need to get into that, that level of discomfort in order to make any progress. And we're not just talking training, we're talking life. Mental toughness basically means resilience, the ability to challenge yourself. You say. And push through even when obstacles are creating so much stress on your system that uh, the ego and the nervous system can feel a little bit threatened. Uh, mental toughness is facing that and uh, continuing on. Yeah, mental toughness is just cracking on regardless. And now, it's a very fine line between going beyond pain and recognizing when to stop is very important. That's something that most Marines that I used to work with are completely useless at. We've kind of prided ourselves on pushing ourselves beyond the, the, like, the point of pain to the extent that part of the reason why everyone's injured. But um, uh, in like, I've, I've in my six years since leaving the Marines, I've massaged hundreds of people, hundreds of bodies. Scott's done many more than I have. And um, in my experience, there's a significant difference between massaging men and women in terms of pain tolerance. And nine times out of 10, women are much better at taking pain than men. And whenever I communicate this to some of my male clients, they're always like, oh, really? No, no, surely not. Well, it's kind of obvious. You know, I know a lot of women go through a lot of pain every single month um, on a monthly cycle, and they're just used to cracking on regardless and ignoring it. Uh, and that's something that you know, men just live in this comfort zone of ease and safety, kind of resting on their laurels of maybe or may not be you know, physically stronger. And they just think, well, obviously we are the, yeah. <laughs> but um, so when it comes to mental toughness, I think there is a significant difference between sexes. And in my experience, women are a lot more mentally strong than men. Um, so should we uh, talk about our little, our... Um... Before we do, uh, just this concept of um, who has it, how do they get mm. it, uh, yeah. where did it come from? Uh, there's uh, debates with a lot of the athletic components and debates with a lot of talents in, in the human life that uh, tend to be summed up in, are we born with it? Is it an environmental factor? Is it something that can be trained? And uh, there's a lot of different ways to look at mental toughness, but in uh, Phil's experience and my experience, um, the the question is not where did we get it, but the question is, are we developing it? Uh, is it part of our routine in our lives, perhaps by necessity or perhaps by just personal drive? So we've, we've encountered and worked with people who were fortunate enough to have uh, no concern financially, to have uh, maybe no direct pressure obligation from their family. Uh, that, that might seem mythical, but some people uh, are born with a tremendous amount of opportunities and we can, we can make the, the simple guess that they're not going to be mentally tough if everything is provided for them. And lo and behold, that's often true. 
except when there's the exception. And mm -hmm. so if someone grew up in a life of plenty, but became mentally tough in an incredible way, well, we can, we can look in and realize they faced a lot of challenges. Mm -hmm. They yeah. pushed themselves out of their comfort zone again and again and again. And so lo and behold, mental toughness is not just a state of being, uh, but it's also a practice that's either in our lives or missing from yeah. our lives. Uh, yeah. So now down to the scale uh, that Phil here wrote out, uh, this applies psychologically and it applies physically from a training perspective. So uh, to the left of this in the, the comfort zone in the green, we can take the, the everyday athlete and we can look at the example of jogging in that very comfortable pace. That jogging in that comfortable pace that maybe we can hold a conversation in. Uh, is there value in that? Absolutely. But if, if all someone does is stay in that comfort zone, uh, then they have a long ways to go to achieving yeah. mental toughness. Yeah. So um, just to basically reiterate exactly what he said, if you know, let's take let's take 500 meter row. Um, you can maintain a certain power wattage, but I've seen people row, I've seen people run, I've seen people cycle enough to know when this point, when they reach this point. Um, uh, certainly, something that we used to kind of pride ourselves on in the Marines is the ability to go through all of this without even the slightest change of expression on your face. And I'd look around and look at, you know, we're on our way into a battle zone, we're strapped up with as much kit as possible, we've got somebody's weapon in your face and somebody else digging into your spine and you've got about 100 kilograms of kit strapped to you. Um, and I just look around and all the faces just completely, yeah, just nothing you can do about it. So there's no point in kind of crying and complaining about it. But anyway, so, this point here is, you know, so let's say your 500 meter row. At some point, um, just going back to a previous Whiteboard Wednesday, we talked a little bit about um, cardiovascular capacity. At some point, the message signals will be released telling your brain that the, you're being poisoned because there's so much lactic acid in your bloodstream. Now it's at that point that the mental toughness comes in. It's that point to ignore the message, messaging signals from your brain and just keep going. And your discomfort levels will keep going up, 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 until at some point you'll reach that barrier. Now, that's the fine line. Now, I want to be perfectly clear that, you know, I, I think uh, in the fitness industry, a lot of people pass this, and that's why they go to people like Scott for injury rehab because they've been pushed beyond this point. But um, I think through fear, so many people don't even go past green mm. because they're so afraid of this. Um, I think uh, just generally in terms of living, living in a state of discomfort, I mean, I personally think discomfort is a positive thing. You've got to embrace it. A positive thing, it's a positive stress. Uh, our, even on an organism level, uh, we respond to uh, a, an information-rich environment. And if, if we're not getting enough stress, the cells start to collapse. The organism gets less healthy. Even our organ systems uh, might shut down uh, in a way that um, can, uh, you know, just destroy our health, but also our psychological well-being. So what, what's interesting about mental toughness, I'll just share, is it shows up in so many different realms, which is not um, how strong are we, how powerful, how much endurance we have, but are we willing to stick with it? Uh, and as long as we're, we're smart enough to avoid the, the trauma zone, the red zone, at least as much as we can, as much as life will allow, uh, the development phase is so often in this discomfort zone. Um, and I'll just share that I grew up with migraines, uh, which actually prevented me from pursuing a lot of sports. So realistically, as a teenager, I was not very strong, I was not very powerful, but I had spent years dealing with these cycles of massive pain, 
which was for me traumatic, but it also gave me that quality of trusting myself. I knew I could handle it. I'd been there before. I could do it again. And so without me realizing, uh, even though I wasn't accomplishing maybe my athletic goals, I was building this resilience because I was getting challenged again and again. And I started to apply that resiliency to other areas of my life, which mm -hmm. have served me well. Yeah. Um, yeah. So I'm just to tie this off by quickly talking about how this applies to not just the kind of physically strong and physically active. Um, my grandmother, I would say that mental toughness is one of her strongest attributes. Um, she's 92 years old and still sharp, um, but she's lost complete control of her hands. She can't move. Um, she's in a lot of pain in her hands and feet. She just cracks on regardless, and she is such an inspiration to be around. She never complains. She just goes about her day. Everything is so positive. I think, I think that's you know just in terms of longevity, um, the ability to have a positive mental attitude and to be grateful for everything in your day. That that is mental toughness. And I think if you look at all of the kind of um, octogenarians and centenarians people over 100, they all have mental toughness in common. They all have a positive outlook in life. So this is such an important part of um, the 10 components. Uh, I think that's, that's good for this component. We're going to return to it in different ways as we go through other videos, uh, breaking down obviously movement patterns uh, and future concepts of recovery and program. Uh, but for now, I just want to thank everyone for showing up. And as always, if you have any questions, feel free to contact us, and we look forward to providing more uh, content for you going forward. Thanks for joining us. You stay classy, San Diego. <laughs>